is Napalm Jed Johnson. I'm joined by Alan Hynek and Ricardo Magni. Had some more basketball games with his boys today, but he gave us his blessing to run the show, and then he's going to be back next week. All right, you're listening to episode 47. Alan, did you know that that is my old college baseball number, dude? No, I had no idea. Well, why not? You should know. You should know these things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I tried to find, I Googled myself one time, tried to see if I could find like any proof that I actually played Division Two baseball, and there's like nothing, dude. There's nothing. So, <laughs> That's really, funny. Yeah, I really can't blame you. Um, hey, if, if you guys didn't listen to episode 46, go back and check it out. We covered the 2018 Canadian National Grip Sport Championships, and we talked about our first sponsor, Muscle Farm, and they've committed to sending free supplements to a lucky winner each week. And you can win just by doing a couple things. It's pretty easy. Uh, First off, right now, as you're listening to this, hit the like button. Hit it right now. And then go down and leave a comment about something. We don't care what it is, whether it's how much you love the show, um, how, you know, bad of form my dumbbell rows are. I know people have been hitting me on that one, and also my kettlebell swings. So you can talk about that if you want. If it's, an, Or it could just be a grip comment. That would be outstanding, too. But like and comment this show, and then go to our Instagram page, which had to change. Alan, you ready for this story? Yeah. Sure. So basically, I don't know how to get into the old Instagram account for grip sport. I I don't even know how to get into it anymore. I can't find the password. I can't I can't log in. Um it keeps on resetting it. I'm lucky I can even get into my own like personal uh Jed Diesel, Jed.diesel IG. I can I can't even get into it. So I had to start another one. I had to go back and do a voiceover for the new one and I had to do surgery basically on the audio file for the show we did last week because I had to change the the Instagram. So <clears throat> I'm going to – I'll keep working on it and see if I can recover it, but as of right now, I can't figure out how to do it. So the new the new Instagram for the show is Grip Sport IG. Grip Sport IG. That's all one word, no underscores, no nothing. I was having a hard time even saying underscore last week, so it's probably going to be easier to just go with this right now anyway. So did you get on to the new one, Alan, Grip Sport IG? No, I haven't been on to the new one yet. All right, well, get on there when you can, and everybody else do so. So, again, it's real easy. Hit like on this video, leave us a comment, and then go over and follow Grip Sport IG on Instagram and like the post for this show, which it gave me so much trouble last week, I never even put up a post for the episode 46, so I need to do that this week. Um, back to the drawing. Like I said, we we're going to, well, it's Muscle Farm giving away something each week, and then if it's an international winner, then I will send them uh, one of my DVDs. But James Rodriguez won the drawing this week, and he'll be nice. receiving the, yep, the free supplements from Muscle Farm. So, James, thank you for liking and commenting underneath the video last week and for following the Grip Sport IG page on Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, Alan, do you have an updated tally of all of the uses of the hashtag This Week in Grip, brother? Yeah, it looks like we're up to 1,052 now. Mm -hmm. So that's a bump of about 40 over last week. You even see our buddy Adam Glass is throwing in the the hashtag This Week in Grip here and there on some of his card-tearing feats lately. Oh, really? I didn't notice that. That's cool. He's jumped on board, yeah. (laughs) Very nice, very nice. Well, that's huge. time. That's yep. huge, spreading the word. That's what it's all about. After all, Alan, you know the first rule of grip sport. What is the first rule of grip sport, Alan? You tell everyone about grip sport. That's exactly right. Very good. Today we're going to be talking about four for February. We tried to fit this in last week, but Alan and I were so long-winded we couldn't even come close to putting it in. So we want to make sure they get enough. You know, they they get their uh, they get their time in the spotlight as well. So we're going to be covering that today. Uh, real quick, Alan, before we do that, did you see what I got in the mail last week, brother? I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was pretty excited about that. I'm hoping to find out some particulars though, to tell you the truth, you know, how, uh, how true it is to weigh along with some dimensions. You know, if they, 
if if this is more or less a copy or if it's kind of like its own rendition, you know, if he if he threw it, maybe made it a little wider, a little taller, something, yeah. you know, different slope. I, I'd like to hear a little bit more about it. I, you might not have this information handy, but yeah. maybe like a, a video or something down the line would be pretty awesome with regards to that since we don't see those things every day. Yeah, yeah. So, so if uh, everybody didn't see it, I unboxed uh, a shipment that I got from a fellow named Anthony Arviso. And Anthony is someone, I don't know how I connected with him on Facebook. We ended up connecting somehow. But he got like an entire set of the Silarukov blobs. And I asked him if I could borrow the biggest one that he got for a little while. So it's the 24 kilo Silarukov. And um, you asked about dimensions, Alan. That's a good idea. Um, I'll have to shoot a video where I take some of the dimensions and compare it against uh, the other blobs that I have. It feels... It feels like it may be like a, a cast replica of a uh, of a next gen. To be honest, okay. Mm -hmm. Feels feels narrow. Like in, when it was in the box and I was doing the video, it was like I thought, man, this thing feels huge. But there's just something about like if you're touch if you're like grabbing onto something when you're just like not warmed up and you know you're not doing anything, it really feels daunting. And the, and then when I got when we did a training session yesterday, it it came right up. It was it was actually, you know, an easy lift for me. But you know, if I would have like taken that thing out of the out of the wrapper and thrown it down, I don't think I would have lifted it. It's actually pretty slick. It's got uh, ah, I was wondering got, about that. Yeah, yeah, it's got like a, almost a powder coat or or some kind of gritty paint on it, so it takes chalk well. But if you lift it without chalk, it feels pretty slick. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll have to do like, uh, you know, uh, several times over the years when I've gotten the other different generations of blobs, I'll do like a, a comparison video. And that's a good idea. I haven't done one of those in a while, so I'll go ahead and do that while I've got it. That's the yeah, kind that'd of be awesome. I wanted to, I wanted to do. I don't, I don't know of anyone else that's got one in North America. Have you heard anything about it, Alan? Anyone I else? hadn't. You know, I was. I'd been on that website a couple times, mm -hmm. and um, I actually clicked Add to Cart just to like calculate shipping and things like that to see what it'd be to get it over here. Right. And I didn't think it was, it was that that miserable to do it. I just, I just never pulled the trigger. I don't know why. I've got a. I've got so much of that stuff already, but that's definitely yeah. something on the list. But um, at some point, at some point, I'm sure I'll pick one up. Yeah, but. yeah. I think it, as far as difficulty wise, it's probably in between a next gen and you know, it's it's pretty close to a blue blob. To be honest with you. Um, ah. But but it's like difficulty no wise. Uh, you know, I'm just speaking difficulty wise. Um, what, with no chalk, it's pretty darn hard. It's pretty darn hard. Um, but it, they, it talks, it takes chalk really well. Um, chalk whisperer Luke slapped a base coat on there that probably will never come off until I clean it. So, well, yeah, this was probably a self-serving thing from the, from the gentleman that sent it to you. He probably wanted that healthy coat of chalk on it. That way one day when he gets around to it, it's just going to come mm -hmm. right up. Yeah, I'm gonna to have yeah. to ask him. Maybe he doesn't want me to clean it off before I send it back. That's, that's I know. I should off. I should do that thing too. I should send a couple of my things to maybe Luke or John McCarter, mm -hmm. just so they could work some in there. That way, I can I can set some PRs right out of the gate on some of this stuff. It, hey, you know videos. what, Luke? If you're listening, I smell a, a new service, a new service that you could offer to all of your valued customers, and Alan could be first on the list. That's a good idea, <laughs> Alan. We might even that is, do a yeah. complimentary one for you. <laughs> Uh, professional chalking since, service that's right since you brought it up we might do a free one for you but uh yeah that's a good idea um <laughs> i actually got something else in the mail last week alan that i never i never told anybody about uh i bought uh i got a brand new of the new model rolling thunders this week ah uh, with the end caps on it yes the one with the end caps yep nice what do you think i instantly lost 20 pounds on my rolling thunder Oh wow! Yeah, so um, I've done the best I've done was sometime in 2016. I did 100 kilos with uh, with a with a new style, the former new style, Rolling Thunder, and I could not get 
uh, 190 added. If I remember correctly, it was either 190 or 195. I could not get added to the implement. And um, yesterday, I did get a total of 206. So that's still a drop of you know 15 to 20 pounds off my top ever performance with a with a brand new with a with a newer model handle. So is it because the new model is so much harder, or is it because my former new model got gummed up a little bit? I don't know. I'm not sure. But it, it's definitely more difficult than what I had been training on. So I'm glad I got it because I, I got it because of the the competition coming up in Philadelphia in April. And, um, you know, it was, you know, just going to have to be something that I work on. Okay, so you... You actually picked it up. It wasn't. It wasn't sent to you. No, I bought it. You, you, you bought. It. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes, I actually worked over the money. Yes. Um, yeah. So that's you know that's that's a big part of the training uh, leading up to this April competition. So um, I went ahead and invested in it. So now I have two of the old old style. I have one of the like intermediate new style. And then I have one of the absolute brand new style with the end caps, and it says like Iron Mind on the on the ends. So uh, plan on doing like some uh, double Rolling Thunder pull ups and things along those lines. A little bit of uh, extra work with them to get my you know to get accustomed to it and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I wondered about that. I'd only seen those, but the only pictures I'd seen were but like um, you know fit expos and stuff. Yeah, I hadn't seen anybody actually training with a new one of those yet. Yeah. So uh, does, the, does the build look different on it, other than the no, end caps? No. In fact, maybe what I can do is a comparison of of the three types that I have. But no, the there's not a, a significant difference from the former new model to the current new model. At least not in the way that there is a difference from the old models to the new ones. Like the the, the newer ones move much much better than the older ones. So, sure. uh, yeah, maybe I'll do a video on that, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be what? interested. Mm -hmm. What about you, man? Any new buys or anything new going on with your with your shoulder woes or any updates you want to share? No, I uh, I see the, the surgeon on Tuesday, okay. so I won't have any, any results on anything up until then. And otherwise, no, no, new, no new purchases, really. Um, just kind of sitting on everything I've got and... And training with what I can for right now. So, um, but yeah, that's about it. Nothing, nothing overly, overly exciting. A lot of rehab work because I kind of got that golfer's elbow thing going on, which sucks a yeah. little bit. But otherwise, uh, I think I'm still making progress anyway. Do you have one of those arm aids? Did you ever get one of those? I do. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You've I love it. I, I use it. I use it religiously. Yep. Yeah. That's um, okay. that's a daily thing for me. Yeah. This was. You know what this was is one of those things I, I think I probably should have I probably should have seen it coming, but I just don't back off fast enough on some things. But yeah. how I I don't know if I described this, but what I did, but it it actually came on when I was doing doing some I do neutral grip chin ups, and I found out that I can actually sneak out a rep or two more if I kind of supinate my hands at the top of the movement. Okay. Yep. It kind of gives yep. me a little bit more power. Well, that little bit of twisting action is enough to piss off my left elbow. Yeah. So, so that kind of shut me down. And once I recognized it, you know, it's like, great, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. But, but I opened the door. So, so every little thing kind of gets it now. So I kind of got to get back to baseline and just, you know, once I'm healed up, never do that sort of crap again <laughs> is what it amounts to. But in the meantime, it doesn't matter what I do. Like, you know, like pulling a doorknob, you know, kind of is yeah. enough to get it a little bit. So that kind of stuff can be an absolute nightmare when you have tennis elbow. Absolute nightmare. I, I yeah. remember that. I remember those days back when I first got it. Alan, so just in case people don't know, maybe I'm, I've, I think there's a lot of people that listen that are kind of new to grip and they, they're not sure about some of the injuries that happen. So what exactly is tennis elbow? And tell us about your your pull ups, like what your what neutral is and things like that, just so everybody understands. Okay, well, so for me, I've I've I'm currently right now going through golfer's elbow, and that oh, would be yeah, that would I be said the wrong one. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Medial epicondylitis. That's where 
all of the all of the muscles of the forearm ultimately kind of tie in at at one point the 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 flexor muscles of the forearm rather right. tie in at sort of one point up near the inside of the elbow area mm-hmm. and for whatever reason it's 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 an it's an overuse injury it's um kind of a chronic overuse injury um but it just causes a lot of inflammation and an extreme amount of pain in the in the inside elbow area. I know one of the things that tends to cause it in people, um, there's an actual pronator, or uh, excuse me, actually I think it's a, is it a supinator muscle? I thought it was a pronator though. Um, but it's either a pronator or a supinator. There's one muscle in particular in that arm that really likes to get lit up during certain movements. And that's where we use things like sled rotate or sledge rotations that can actually help kind of kind of resolve some of those problems. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other main one we deal with is, is tennis elbow, and that's uh, lateral epicondylitis, and that's where the muscles of, the, of the, the flexors of the forearm kind of tie in high up on the elbow. And the reason we see a lot of that, generally speaking, is because of just, just weakness on that side of the forearm has been my experience. Right. Um, it's like anything. People are all about biceps, but no triceps. It's you know we get a lot of we get a lot of flexion, but not enough extension, and it's just a huge imbalance kind of thing. So um, it's it's like anything. Our sport kind of dictates our imbalances, and and grip guys tend to overuse the crap out of our flexors, and then and then the extensors almost get neglected, and we recognize that, so we do work to to get rid of them, band extensions, sludge rotations, reverse curls, all of the, all of those things to kind of keep things in check, have to yeah. do different things, you know, a, a contrast bath, you name it, whatever works. You know, we all seem to have kind of our own, uh, our own little secret remedies that, that get us through some of this stuff, but there's some go-tos that pretty much work for everybody. Mm-hmm. But it's the, it's the antagonistic balance that ultimately tries to keep things in check. Okay. So, um, but yeah, with regards to the neutral grip chin-ups for me, um, I'm not a wide grip kind of guy. That tends to to put my wrists in all kinds of weird positions, locking them yeah. in place, and and it doesn't agree with my shoulders either. So I tend to keep things just a little closer, and with a, with more or less a thumbs facing me grip as opposed to a, a a pronated grip where your your palms would be out versus supinated where your palms would be towards your face, and I do it. My chin-ups are done on an implement that's able to freely move, because I want like? things. What do you like to use? Um, I had generally been using um, either cannonball grips or like two-inch crushers. Gotcha. Is typically what I stick with. Um, so, so as I said, what I discovered was that um, in doing in doing the chin-ups, if I would supinate it, my grip at the tail end to go from neutral to to supinated. I could almost recruit a little bit more more upper arm, and that would kind of that would give me a little bit more muscle to work with in the tail end of the sets, mm-hmm. and and that particular motion was just enough to just enough to aggravate. And it's something that happens over time. It wasn't one workout; it was many, many, many workouts. And right. it's like it's just it's it's almost it's almost exponential. If it took me 20 workouts to get there, it's going to take me. 40 workouts to recover from it kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, so, yes, it's, yes, it's so slow to recover. Easily, yeah, and easily prevent it if you keep your mind on it, but then once you get it, it's like, crap, i got to deal with this again. Yes, and then, and then it's, like, it's like stubbing your toe, where it's like, okay, great, well, I know I'm not going to, you know, kick that thing with my shoe off ever again, but, but you'll be darned if you're not suddenly tripping over everything. You know, <laughs> well, with our hands, what are, what are we going to do? You know, we got to open the refrigerator, right? We got to, there, there's things we just have to do. And all of those little things, they just tend to, tend to light it up and it, it feels like it's a, it's a setback every time you do it. But so all you can do is back off on the, on the main things that you love to do and then just fight through the other things to try to get to the end. So, right. But so it's maddening, but I guess it's kind of, it's par for the course, really. You know, uh, we, we all deal with it. Well, most of us deal with it at one time or another. And uh, anytime you push, you run the risk of that happening, you know. But I guess the, the bright side for all of us is that, you know, at least, you know, in, in, in my case here and in anybody else's, you know, our heads are in the right place. We're trying to be better. You know, we're trying to improve ourselves. It's just kind of things derail once in a while and it's outside of our control. 
Right. Yep. <laughs> but in the end, it could have been done in a worse way. You know, I mean, I could have done something stupid, falling on the ice, anything like that, and causing issues. So yeah. at least I was doing something I was having fun with. And, hell, it'll get better eventually anyway. But, the, yeah. you know, the rehab is kind of exciting, though, because realistically, I still get to continue grip training. It's just a different type of it. You know, it's a lot more reverse curls now. It's a lot more of that stuff. So it's it's not like I'm suddenly sitting around pushing buttons on the TV remote control all day. Yeah, all these no. reverse curls you're doing, dude. Next time, next time we see you, it's your forearms are gonna keep you from walking through the doorways instead of those <laughs> shoulders. I know it. I know it. And that's the, that's one of my downfalls, you know, is that when things like this come up and it sidelines me, so to speak, I suddenly just start doing like an overabundance of the of the corrective yeah. things. So rather than yeah. just a few sets here and there, it's like all day long almost. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. walk past the bar without banging out a couple sets. So I remember. Yeah. I, I hurt my thumb one time in '09, and I thought that like maybe TTK Titan's Telegraph Key would would a lot of work would would help bring that back. So I was doing a tremendous amount of stuff, and my my thumb pads got so big that I I couldn't reach into the mailbox anymore, dude. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't get in there. So, so now we have like this over oversized mailbox, and uh, you know, they're able to I love get, it. Like, yeah, they're able to stick, like, entire giant Amazon boxes into the mailbox now, but these thumb pads, they just get in the way. <laughs> well, you need a big mailbox anyway with all these blob deliveries you're getting. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> pockets, forget it, dude. You'll never see me with my hands in my pockets. I can't get my <laughs> nice. hands in there. Well, Real quick, speaking of hands, dude, wait till you see the videos that I post up on uh, YouTube. It's going to piss off, like, 95% of the grip community. This dude... Ben Hafka came up and trained with us yesterday, and uh, his hand. So he's maybe five ten, and his hands are equally as long as mine. His thumb is just about the size of mine. He can get the same exact one eighty that I can get with his uh, thumb and pinky. And dude, longest dude, longest pinky I've ever seen on a dude. Absolutely, he, his pinky is like almost a full digit longer than mine. At least a at least a full fingernail longer than mine. Holy cow! So Wait, what did he, he reach down and face lift Blobzilla first time or something or what? He, so he promptly hub lifted a forty five, which easier end forty five. Not gonna lie, and absolutely brutalized the next gen fifty pound blob. Absolutely dominated it. Not even not even a not even a doubt that he was going to lift it. His hands are just absolutely huge. So he's got two out of his three qualifiers for nationals done already. And he weighs like, uh, he's in the 93 kilo class basically. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I thought I saw an unfamiliar face in, in one of those videos. So yes, I, pr- cool. yes, and I promptly scoped him like eight times. So <laughs> he'll, he'll never be able to come back. To What's his background? He's like a arm wrestling type or. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a, uh, he's a bodybuilder actually. Ah, and um, <clears throat> I guess he's done a couple arm wrestling workouts with Adam Culver, who's come down to my house a couple times now. He's a dude with a gigantic beard and uh, dopey-looking face. But uh, he's a good guy. Uh, all of them are good guys. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good time, and uh, he put up some pretty good numbers. So looking forward to training with him more. Nice. Uh, yeah, so I don't want to eat up too much time jibber-jabbering, Alan, why don't you start off with some of our uh, discussion on 4 for February that took place here recently. All right. Let me scroll back here. So I have got the the results up on the grip board site right now. Um, let's see here. I will just go ahead and, and read through uh, Nate's initial write-up here, and then we can go through his uh, the results that he has listed. Yeah. So, right. All right, so from from Nate Browse, it says, Lots of PRs were set on Saturday. Items of note, John McCarter pulled 43.8 kilograms on the Iron Mine hub, shattering the existing Iron Mine recognized world record by six pounds. Obviously, this is a new NAGS record as well. Time will tell if Iron Mine will recognize the lift after watching the video and deliberating. We now know, of course, they, they indeed recognized it. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless, this lift was amazing to witness. After Iron Mind responds with their decision, either way, we will release the hub video. Originally, it was believed that John had pulled 47 kilograms on the hub. If you can imagine 47 kilograms on the hub, 
Yeah, that would well, just be insane. And I just did the math. Forty three point eight equals ninety six point five six pounds. So yeah, that's you I, I'm gonna put I'll see what forty seven is. Just a second. Unless you know what it is right off the top of your head. It's it's gotta be it's pushing it's over a hundred. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll figure but, it out. But that's about it. R- Ricardo's the snappy one with the kilograms to pounds conversion. <laughs> yeah, he just knows. So I just did it. It's one oh three point six one. Wow. Right. So, okay, so here's where things got interesting. So it looks like through careful studying of the video and conversations with the loaders, it was determined that the implement pin carabino washer weight was accidentally set to 6 pounds as opposed to 6 kilograms. The fault lies entirely with the promoter, me, and caused a revamp of the entire hub competition numbers. That said, John still killed the existing record by over 6 pounds. Had not e- I had not even managed to watch the video before... Looks like Anthony Clarino and Frank D. DeLuca, okay, had contacted me, prompting an investigation that killed a good portion of my day. I was literally sick to my stomach when I finally figured out what had gone wrong. I'm very glad that I did not preemptively throw the totals up. The class placings page was screwed up, so I put class numbers to the right of the overalls. Additionally, John won three out of four events, taking a single second to Chez in grippers. Go figure. So... um, Julieta Villa set her fourth, fifth NAGS records after only nine months of grip training and third grip contest. Had the IM hub snafu not occurred, she might have had a third, but wasted at least one attempt coming in very light due to the incorrect weight total. With her competitive nature and training numbers literally approaching Elizabeth Horn's iron mine records, her grip future looks positive, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Uh, Duvorn Harris was called away mid comp for a family emergency. Sorry about that, Devorn. I hope everything was all right. Um, he had been training a little bighorn hard, and a world record was a real possibility. Hopefully, we'll get the chance to compete on it down the road. One other thing of note, I heard also that John McCarter actually lifted over the current Iron Mine world record on the uh, on the blockbuster pinch. It just wasn't enough. To, it wasn't that one kilogram over margin i think he fell just just light of that so he's he's flirting with a new world world record there as well so um there's a little other some other of nate's notes here it looks like they also had an inch pinch hold for time it looks like delmer carter dominated that with 40 seconds and it doesn't seem like anybody else even came close um they had that platform double sledge event which i think was that something that was where was that done that was done at gripmas right that's right. In years past. And um, anyway, it sounded like Nate was the only one that liked that. <laughs> it says, hard to really call this a contest. Pretty much everybody did a few and said, this sucks. <laughs> Myself, I love the pump. This alone has helped my offhand gripper improve quickly. Um, and then Ben Nate says, need to confer with Carl, Aaron, and Delmar regarding this event. Adam and Frank both had very respectful point totals also. So, on to the official results, see if I get it kind of bringing this up on my phone here so they read kind of small. I don't see these things listed in any. Are you able to see this, Jed? Yes, I'm looking at the same post that, that you're looking at. It looks like there may have been a screen, a screen print done on an Excel spreadsheet or whatever the equivalent might be on a Mac. I'm not sure. And then it was placed into the post as an image. So, yeah, I believe I'm looking at the same same one you are. Yeah, so I'm not looking at things necessarily in any particular order um, with regards to, to weight in class. So I guess I'll just go down the list here and, and start. Um, so Delmer Carter looks like he hit 95 on grippers. Um, it looks like grippers grippers are the only things that are going to be indicated in pounds here. Everything else I'm guessing is kilograms moving Agreed. forward just for the record by how this looks. So... Otherwise, um, 90, people are, 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 are closing like Beef Builder Pros up in this piece. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so, um, 95 on the grippers. I believe these were 30-millimeter grippers. That's kind of a Nate specialty, I think, here. I think he likes that size. I could be wrong about that Whoa. That block set. Better start training my grip. I just dropped the phone right out of my hand, bro. <laughs> Was that but your I take? Was chalk, it, dude. I didn't chalk. Was it? <laughs> got to get got to get Luke's magic touch on that. <laughs> Maybe you can be the first customer. Um, it was thirty millimeter block grippers, right? 
Yeah, I think you're right. I think I remember that's that. That's what I thought they were doing. Okay, so Delmar Carter hit 95, uh, 24.8 on the hub, uh, 33 on the blockbuster pinch, and 62 on the little big horn. So he he finished in 15th place with his uh, class placing of fifth. Um, I think I'm just taking a quick look down the. No, there were a couple of a couple of women competitors. So um, Juliet Avila is listed here. Um, 87 in the grippers, 19.8 kilos on the hub. That's a good. Let me get my calculator out here for some of these. Make this a little bit, just a little bit easier. But that's a good hub number. Yeah, it's probably like what 43 pounds or something, with night with 20 kilos being 44. Yep, 43 and a 43 and a half. So that's a solid. That's a solid hub, and it sounds like she'd have done a little bit better. So nice. Um, then the pinch was 24.5. So that's again, that's really not a bad, not a bad pinch number. Especially it considering it's a three-inch pinch. I think that's a three-inch block, right? Close to it, anyway. Yeah. Yep. Just about. Let me. Uh, Pretty wide. Let me verify that here quick. She may have a she may have a large set of hands on her. Indeed, yep, three inch. Yeah. So pulling just you know, fifty four pounds, that is that is very solid. And then great if uh, she decided to come to nationals this year. She could really do well, I think. Well it looks like it, yeah, and I'm not sure. I'm looking at how many other there's a Lisa. It doesn't look like she would have qualified based on the amount of the amount of competitors here anyway. But but nonetheless, it looks to me like she'd be able to do it pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, 53K on the little bighorn, and that all earned her. She took 18th overall, but a first place in her class. So, Tim Butler, 24. I didn't realize he was such a such a young guy. Wow. He's just a lad. He's just a just lad, a, uh, just Alan. A, just a lad. Just a kid, yeah. yeah. So, he hit uh, 149 on the grippers, so so that's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, 29.8 on the hub. Let me just real quick. He's so had, 65. He's, had, he's been riddled with injuries like the last six months, if I remember correctly. He's had one thing after the other that he's been. I knew that things kind of things kind of started going downhill for him. I think didn't he have a like a facelift of a of a blob or something like that go wrong? It kind of yeah. torqued one of his fingers. And I think everything kind of fell apart. Well, that's how that that's how that works. You hurt one hand, you start doing more with the other, and then you just take it out too. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely gotta, definitely gotta be careful on those ones. So, 65 pounds on the hub. So that is that is pretty beastly. I haven't seen a whole lot of you know hub lifting around out of him. You know, more or less like inverted dumbbell lifts and stuff is kind of the things I was seeing. So, this is a really nice. That's a really nice hub number. Then he moved in to 37 on the pinch. So, 81 pounds on the blockbuster pinch. That's another that's solid huge. number. Yeah, yep. man, that's that's really good. And little bighorn was 83k, so 182.6 pounds. So, real good lifting out of Tim. He says real consistent through all of this. So that was good for a, a fourth place overall and second in his class. I'm curious, moving down the list, who he took second to. So, um, on to Devorn Harris. So he hit 150 on the grippers, 23.8 on the hub, and then it looks like after that he must have had to bow out because I yeah. see a zero and then and then a no entry, unfortunately. So Frank Beluca, um, hard to scroll to see this. 129 on the grippers, 25.8 on the hub, uh, 30 kilos on the pinch and 67 on the little bighorn. So that got him second in his class. That was 93 kilogram class for Frank. Yeah, Frank recently certified on the red nail after uh, a long pursuit going after it. So he's on that list now. And I know that he had some injuries last year too. So it's all about sure. sticking with it and getting through them. Yep. And Steve Nichols, I remember this guy from um, from SJ4. He's the one that he's one of the fellows that certified the the Crush the Dust Challenge in impressive form right before the competition. I think he had some pretty big big thick bar numbers too. So let's see here. Yeah, he's one of the big fellows that came out of nowhere, right? Yeah, yep. Arm wrestling, arm wrestling type. So I think he was somebody that had some some trainings at the at the Browse House gym here and there through the years. I think or, or recently anyway. 
and, and they've kind of gotten in more and more involved in some of the <clears throat> some of the grip aspects. So 138 on grippers, 24.8 on the hub, uh, 30 on the pinch, and 65 on the little bighorn. Don't you Are actually you bump down right? to Tom Flesher's? I, I bumped uh, down numbers. wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard to see this on the this. grippers. And then 26.8 on the hub, 37 on the pinch. 37 on the pinch and 91, 91 on the little bighorn. That is a nice lift. Yeah. 200 pounds on that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, I apologize for miss, misspeaking there. Let me see if I can get this. No problem. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm looking at this actually on my on my work phone. So this is all oh. very small. It's kind of easy to lose. I don't have like a mouse or a pointer or anything, so I'm kind of using my... My fat index finger here. So, pointer. all right. <laughs> what the hell is a pointer, Alan? Are you talking about those big wooden things that I used to get hit by teachers with in elementary school? You use one of those on your phone? I think they're called styluses, bro. I think they're styluses, stylus. not pointers. <laughs> well, I got a, I got a pen now, so hopefully this will make life a little bit easier here. So, um, Tom Flesher, then. Um, let's see here. One eighteen on the grippers. 24.8 on the hub, 30 on the pinch, and 65 on the little bighorn. That's 14th place overall and fourth in his class. And now we're starting to move into a couple of real heavy hitters here. So, let's see, Tom Flesher. All right, so Adam Junker. Dude, he had a, a pinch device that he made at uh, Gripmas this year that was badass. I, I took pictures of it, and I never ended up sharing the pictures. And now I can't even remember exactly what it looked like, but he, he donated it as a prize. I forget who won it, but it was it was really cool. It was like a block weight trainer or something like that, and it was plate loadable, and it had like verticals, vertical panels to, to pinch on. It was really, really nice. I hope he like, I hope he markets that or gets that in someone's hand to market because it was really, really nice. Yeah, he's posted some pictures. I think there might even be a video of something like that over on the grip board too. Cool, cool. Um, but he had a lot of a lot of nice thought into it. A lot of the, the craftsmanship was was very good. He's he's definitely got some talent. We see a lot of that out of those guys. Between you know Adam Junker, like um, um, Andrew Dube, those guys have some real skills when it comes to some of those things. So we're seeing a lot of a lot of good stuff coming up. Yeah, it'd be nice to see another another equipment manufacturer out there. Because yep. there's definitely a need for, for especially that, that type of specialty stuff. Mm-hmm. So, for grippers, looks like he hit a he hit a 144, which is very solid. 29.8 on the hub, uh, 30 on the pinch, and then 70 on the on the little bighorn. Yep. So that was ninth overall, and that got him a, a first place finish in his class. He was actually 93. K and if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I thought he was 83K at SJ4. I could be wrong about that though, but I, I could have I swore he was just a shade a shade under. Um, all right, now on to John McCarter. So he steps in 176 on grippers. So no surprise that's there. huge. I saw him do yep. that like cold out of the car with no sleep for like six days. At yep, <laughs> yeah, solid number. 43.8 on the hub. Uh, 49 on the pinch, just huge, and then 93 on the little bighorn. So he was in fine form, 204.6 on the little bighorn. So that is just monstrous, just yep. gigantic. So that was good. That got him a first overall, and then of course a first in his class. Good day across the board. Uh, yep, did real solid. Um, Chris Android was up. Um, and still in 83k class, so good to him for for keeping it off and um, and and hitting his goal with being in that weight class. Looks like he got a, a he would 90 pound... be if he shaved his chest, Alan, he'd be in the 74 kilo class. <laughs> but he's, he don't he don't like that. He, he I think he's afraid of razors. So, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> So 90 on grippers, uh, 19.8 on hub, uh, 27 on pinch, and 65 on the little bighorn. And that got him 17th overall and third in his class. Uh, Aaron Corcoran then made the trip down. Arizona, Arizona representing on the East Coast. 
So 162 on grippers out of him, 36.8 on the hub. So that is still one way or the other. Let me just get back to that here. Can't, it can't be right. No, it is. There's, um, that's just 81 pounds, 81 pounds on the yeah. hub. Yep, solid, solid. And then 43 on that pinch. I knew he had a pretty beefy wide pinch. So, yeah, 94.6. So that is, that is some serious numbers there. I and think then he Aaron his, may be like one of the overlooked, easily the most one of the most overlooked pinchers, especially in the United States. Um, you you don't hear people really talking about him as far as his pinch abilities, and I think it's because he doesn't put out a lot of videos. But every yes. contest he goes to, he does very well in the pinch. He I think he won the two hand pinch uh, last year at nationals. Um, and this, I mean, 43 kilos, it's just under 95 pounds on, on the pinch block. That's huge. Yep, so yep. He even has prowess, like, uh, across different different widths, which you don't always see that often. Right, right. I was going to say the same thing you did with regards to, he just, he doesn't have the same the same level of visibility that, that some of the other folks do. We just He's just right. not that, he's just doesn't have a social media presence like everybody else does. But that's all right. That's all right. This this sport needs a needs a sleeper too. So <laughs> keeps everybody on their toes. Yep. So um looks like eighty three K on the little big horn and that was good for second place overall and first place in his class. So congratulations to Aaron. Those are some those are some solid numbers. Um let's see here. Anton Torella. Uh, 138 on grippers, 26, 8 on hub, 26 on pinch, 64 on little bighorn. And that was good for 13th place overall and, and fifth in his class. I tell you, there's a trend with these, with these hub numbers. I know some guys refer to things as magical, and it looks like people had a really good day on the hub. A lot of people were pulling some pretty solid stuff on that. Yeah, um, um, and Anton really has come a long way since I first met him. The first time I competed with him was King Kong 2014, or wait, I'm sorry, 2013. And he was very nervous, and you could tell he was inexperienced and really didn't have uh, a good idea of, you know, bridging up on your attempts and things like that. He was just brand new, you know. And now mm-hmm. you see, you know, his his numbers have come a long way, and at a competition you see that he's more confident and is able to, um, you know, stay grounded a little bit more and not go not get so excited. So that's that's cool to see also. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Next up is uh, uh, Anthony Andrade. The eighth. So this is the Chris's eighth son. Yep. So eleven years old. So youngest youngest competitor. Uh, 43 on grippers, 9.8 on the hub, uh, 15k on the pinch, and little bighorn was was 28. And so, uh, uh, his dad Tank put up some videos of him, and I believe he set a PR on the hub that day. I think that was the uh, PR for him, if I remember correctly. Nice, nice, good for him. Hopefully, this is something he'll he'll stick with. Should be a future. Yeah. Um, next up, we've got Vinny Ufta. I don't want to, oh, there's the, there's, there's, there's the, the Ufta. I guess I'll get called out on that one. Uh, Vinny Revelis, Reveles, I apologize if I'm getting that name incorrectly. Um, once, I, I believe he's just Vinny on the grip board. I can't remember what he goes by. Um, 140, 138 on grippers, 21.8 on the hub, uh, 30 on pinch, and 72 on the little bighorn. And that was second in his class, it looks like. Yep, second in the 83K class. Cool. Awesome. So, another, another newcomer, and looking forward to seeing him and many more contests coming up. Yep. And I thought he was recently, I could be wrong, I thought he was one of the ones that had recently submitted a, an MMO attempt on the grip board, actually. I'll have to double-check that. Mm-hmm. Um, so next we have Wojo. Let's see here. 146 on grippers, 28.8 on the hub, 33 on the pinch, and 74 on the little bighorn. 
Was 33 so was... what he got on the pinch, or is that how many abs he has? Because he, he <laughs> threw up an ab shot the other day looking ripped, brother, looking totally yep, ripped. Yep, I've, I've seen that, yep, yep. And that was good for, looks like he was in the 105K class. That was good for first in that and seventh overall. Um, next up was Lisa Pearson. She had 60 on grippers, 13.8 on the hub, 20 on the pinch, and 37 on the little bighorn. So that put her in second place behind uh, Juliet Avila. Then, oh, I was actually surprised to see this name on here. So we've got... Uh, uh, Matt Crabring on here. I thought he and his, I don't recall the other fellow's name now, but I thought those guys were, were if, if, I thought they were in the, in the military or, or I, I can't remember what the specifics was, but I thought, thought it sounded like they weren't going to be able to attend. They were going to be getting sent off someplace. So oh. good that he got to stick around anyway. Um, so Matt Crabring, 138 grippers, 21.8 on the hub, 37 on the pinch, and 78 on the little bighorn. And that was good for fourth in his class. That's 120K. Mickey Lindley. Now, this is a name that I don't I don't recognize at all. No. 93-kilogram um, class. Let's see here. 84 grippers, 20.8 on the hub, 24 on the pinch, and must have passed on the, on the little bighorn left. Hopefully he passed because he's not into Little Bighorn and didn't get zeroed out. Hopefully, hopefully that's the case. Yeah, yeah. Hate to see anybody then, zero out. Sometimes, you know, sometimes in warm ups, stuff's coming up happens. so easy. They throw five pounds on there, and it ends up being cemented to the floor. You see that, that is so the case. Yes, <laughs> it is. It is amazing, and in, in the world of grip, what even less than that really can can do to the way. So. Um, next up was, was Carl Donati. Uh, Great to see him at the competition. He's been involved in grip and bending for, man, I bet it's probably close to 10 years now. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I, I've seen the name around a lot, but other than that, I don't know that I've, I don't know that I've met him, but I've definitely seen the name. I know he's been involved. Yep. He's been here before. I've seen him at Gripmas before. I believe, I don't recall if he was at SG4 though. I'm not sure. I, I don't think he was. Okay. Lots of bending. So hit, lots, lots of bending over the years. All right. So we had uh, 121 on grippers, uh, 23.8 on the hub, 26 on the pinch, and 53 on the little bighorn. So that got him third in the 93K class. Nice. And now we're on to, on to the competition's host. Uh, so Nate Browse. Looks like he came in 162 on grippers, so that's a very nice, very nice gripper number. Mm-hmm. Uh, 29 eight on the hub, 35. So that's a solid, solid hub number. Uh, 35 on the pinch, another good number there, and 71 on little bighorn. So that was good for third in his. Looks like he was in the 120, I guess 120 plus class. Always um, nice to see Nate uh, competing. Um, competed with him in in December at Gripmas, but, uh, you know, he has ongoing health issues, so it's always nice to see that he was able to step up on the platform and give her a go, and uh, well, it, he was telling this me makes it. He, I'm sorry, Alan, you go ahead. I don't want to step on you. Oh, oh, no, this just makes it look like he's, um, he, he seems to be on the mend, because these are some, these are some very solid numbers. That's a good gripper number. I know it's, I know it's not near the, the best that we'd seen from him, but, but a 162 is nothing to, nothing to laugh at. And right. you know, 30k on the hub. I mean, these are some those are some big numbers. So congratulations to Nate. Yeah, and I guess uh, he's also put in a lot of work um, expanding his gripper collection. Like he's got a really really good set, good progressive um, jumps now. So that's that's to be commended. Also, that's that's good dedication. Yeah, I see. He's always shopping, and I know even he's uh, he's been lifting some things lately here too. He's trying to get a fill a couple of gaps, and he's offloading some things he doesn't need anymore. I know he's trying to. Looks like he's budgeting for the uh, for the Legends Anvil for his his already planned um, uh, next February competition. Mm, so okay. looking looking way into the future. So good yep. for him. Yep. Um, next up's Anthony Clarino. Uh, 83k class, so he hit 129 on grippers, 26.8 on the hub, 
29 on the pinch and 68 on the little bighorn. That was good for 10th overall and first in his class. So congratulations, Anthony. And lastly, Big Chez. So he hit a 190 on the gripper. That's a big number. Ooh, ooh. Yep, that's, that's, that's no screwing around. Yep, 32-8 on the hub, uh, 38 on the pinch, and 77 on the little bighorn. So that's good for third in his class and, and second place overall. Or, no, uh, excuse me, third, third place overall and second in his class. So, yeah, monster gripper and, and solid on everything else, too. So, yeah. Chad also had a good day. Uh, yep, also heard he's dealing with another, uh, with a, uh, an Achilles issue right now. So, good luck to uh, him on that. Yeah. He, the a diff, was, different foot? Yeah, I, I don't know. Loosely quoted, he said, uh, bad feet running his family. So, yeah, bad genetics for for his feet, but um, not not bad genetics for his gripper closing. That's for sure. Well, no, and he can he can do that he can do that seated. So that would be at least he can stay up on that anyway. Yeah. Nice. Well, you good. Know, another, Congratulations. Yeah, another feat that went down afterwards, Alan was, um, and again we talked about no selling last week. Aaron Corcoran strolls up to the Man Enough, which is a giant, like, 88-pound uh, steel drop. And, pick, you know, he sets up like he's, like, really getting focused into it. Like, there might be some doubt that he lifts it. He picks it up and strolls with it, like, four or five strides. Did you see that? I, I heard he lifted it, and, and that, that was about it, though. I'm, you know, I'm not surprised, though. I'm, I'm yeah. not surprised. It almost looked yeah. like everybody was going home, so it was time to clean up, and he picked it up and was going to put it away for, for Nate. That's what, that's what it looked like. It was that. Yeah. It was very pretty. Yeah. yeah. He, no, with the way you see some of his, like his, his loose plate pinching and stuff like that, I'm surprised he wouldn't just take one of Nate's 10-kilogram plates, put it right along the side of it, and pick it up like that, you know? Oh, Cause he just, he's he's, why, he's, why he's clearly he got the skills. <laughs> yeah. Well, he did, um, when I was out to his place, I, I surprised him in 2015, didn't tell him I was coming, but I happened to be the same weekend that I was out there visiting my sister who lives in the same city as Aaron, and I strolled up. I was the first one to show up unannounced to his competition. He uh, didn't let it bother him. He he still beat my ass. And then afterwards did um, four 10-kilo plates, the the nice fit, uh, the calibrated ones. The, yep, I saw that. Yeah. So he, 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 he whooped me and then... Uh, then he outfeeded me too because I could not even come close to lifting that. His wide pinch is good, man. It's really good, and he doesn't have a big set of paws on him, so he doesn't let it stop him. He's good. No, and you know most of the stuff that I'd seen him put out, like just in looking at some of his older videos and stuff, it was all like hub work and hub feeding type stuff. You know, mm-hmm. grabbing the hub and you know, like literally a, a hubbable plate and flip it in the air behind him. Yep. Crazy crap like that, you know. Yeah. So and and I knew his I knew his grippers were monsters. What he's a he's a he's not he's MM five, isn't he? He's, he's up pretty there. high up on the list. Yeah, he's he's up there. He's up there. Yeah. He's on a good streak for a long, long time. From like yeah. seven to like twenty ten or something like that. He was he was right up there. He was right at the top. Mhm. Yeah, I think I've read something. I don't know. He's had a I think he might have had some maybe back injuries here or there or something like that. I don't know if that sidelined him a little bit, but I yeah, think over that's... the years he's had severe back injuries. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He to, he, he's told me some of the numbers, like powerlifting wise, he was he was huge. I mean, he he hit some of the some numbers that I've never even come close to ever. Not even in the in the like the strongest points of my lifting career, I was never anywhere near him. Like he was doing like 600 pound squats and things like that. I think ass to grass. I mean, huge. <laughs> oh my huge. God. Yeah. man. <laughs> he, he, That's he, ridiculous. He, he's like, he doesn't really toot his own horn online. He'll no. tell you about the stuff when you're with him. Like when you get talking and he'll, it's like, it doesn't even matter. He no sells his feet. So he's like, yeah, I remember when I was in college, I, I squatted that much. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, because we'd be talking like five five hundred ninety five pounds or so. Yeah, I squatted that back in college. It was it was a good day that day. You know, <laughs> like it, like yeah. it doesn't even matter. He's was was he was he not a shot putter or something yeah. like that? Didn't he have yeah. some? Yeah, okay, I I, yep. I thought it was some. That's a evidently that's a thing too. It seems like um, there's some strong shot putters out there that have some pretty epic grips. 
Yeah. I don't know exactly that correlation, but nonetheless, it's, uh, well, that's I the guess. the background of Lane Snoop, too. He was a shot putter. He was ah, a okay. Well, and then, and then there's that Carl, Carl Myers cough. So, yes. mm-hmm. so I think, yeah, we're going about this wrong. We need to start arm wrestling and shot putting and rock climbing. Yeah. And just put grip on the back burner for a little while and just come in and crush it. <laughs> you know, kind of missing the window there a little bit. <laughs> I, know. I know. Who would have thought? Right, right. I would be curious that mechanism though, because it's 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 so frequent that there there's definitely something to it. I get it with the arm wrestling and I get it with the rock climbing even, but the connection with the shot putting, that that I'd need some I'd need somebody to kind of put the put the science behind that one. Well, one of the things I'd point to there is, like, type 2 muscle fibers. Um, Sure, for being explosive, I suppose, yeah. Um, Every, yes, every lift that Aaron Corcoran does, and I'm even going to throw grippers in there. Aaron's got the best gripper set I've ever seen. For a 20-millimeter block set, it's like the gripper, he, he, he might be setting a 175, and it looks like he's setting a number two gripper. That's how that's how dynamic and, and explosive he is. And then even on the pinch, there's no slowness about him. His top effort, his, you know, his fourth attempt is just as fast as his first attempt. Uh, Axel's the same. Um, it, it's it's really impressive to watch. It really is. If you go I've back his... and try to look at some of his older like training videos on his YouTube channel, speed, speed. I guess yeah. There's some. You know, you bring up his his gripper set, and I always consider that really unorthodox, um, because he he doesn't do it to what I would look at as like from a max leverage standpoint. He kind of has it hanging up in the air, and yeah. it's just like it's just I I see that I think where's the power coming from, right? You know, and obviously it works, but everybody else they more or less it's kind of optimized into their body's leverages, and I just see kind of the opposite with him, but. But yeah, the, you bring that speed component into it, and that makes a ton of sense because if you're sitting there and you're just you're just grinding out some rep, yeah, that's that's gonna suck. If you if you just bang up and down, that that would just stand to reason. You know, yeah. it, it's 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 less time under tension, which is you want it in training, but definitely not in competition. So it it fits. Yeah. Well, interesting. Well, <laughs> okay, answers that. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, never even thought of it from that point of view. So, right. cool. Yeah, buddy. Uh, throw another one in there as uh, as we continue to work with uh, Ben Hefka, uh, meat cutters. He works at the the same beef plant that I worked at for years, and he was he does this one job where he's got to guide the he's got to guide the half of the the cattle towards him, and he says that he does it with uh, he does it with like a a gooseneck wrist. So he takes the meat hook and pulls it to him, but instead of having like an ergonomic neutral grip, he does it with a hooked hand. So it's it's like he's doing a doing like the hook in arm wrestling as he's pulling the the half towards him. So oh nice uh, yeah we may end up seeing some other stuff. You might want to throw meat cutters in there along with uh, rock climbers well, and shot putters eventually. Well yeah yeah does he does he use a fat grips on this hook at the same time by chance or is he yeah. just he told me that there was something that he does. Oh, he so he's ambidextrous. So if because of that, you know, you've got to wear a certain level of protection depending on which hand you cut with and which hand you use a hook with. Oh, sure. So because he switches back and forth, he's got to like double up on the steel mesh gloves that he uses, and because of that, both hands get that thick bar treatment. So that fits. That totally makes sense. Yeah. And, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we talked about all that stuff, dude. It was actually nice to actually talk to somebody who knew what what was going on in the plant because I don't ever get in there anymore. And well, yeah, uh, did you guys you talk about pizzles and stuff. You go through you go through that revisit no, that one. No, we didn't revisit pizzles. <laughs> um, I found out I did orientation for Spanish people last week and found out that a couple of things that I taught them don't even exist there anymore. They they took out the frigoscan or not the frigoscan the electric stimulator. Now this was cool, man. They would uh, they would run the half along the stimulator, and it would like shock the the half, which is is basically, you know, the things that Rocky would punch in the Rocky movies. Oh yeah, yeah. Those are halves. Those are those are those uh, those cows, steers, bulls, whatever they are, have already been cut into two pieces. So that's what I'm talking about with a half. It's it's the exact thing that Rocky would be punching 
on in the Rocky movies. And uh, these things would, would glide against this electric stimulator bar, and they would, like, come to life because there's still energy in those uh, in that musculature of the of the cattle, even though they've already been dehydrated, the head removed, entrails taken out, all that stuff. There's still energy locked in those muscles. So, if I remember correctly, it actually improves the quality of the meat by getting rid of that stored energy. And I guess they took that unit out; they don't even have it anymore. That's that's exactly where he works. So. Oh wow! Yeah. So now do they just have a guy wailing inside the beef in there, or or what's the? I'm not sure. I've now? never seen anybody uh, do a training routine in there. It's actually very <laughs> slippery in that area. Um, there's a they they spray a lot of water on it to cool the the temperature of the of the halves down. So you wouldn't want to go in there and do too much. I'm sure that I don't know. It'd be it would be interesting to see if it was actually uh, a beef plant that Rocky was in or not, or if they had to do any special treatment to the floor, because I, I know that it's very, very slippery in those, in those areas. So yeah, great as far as I know, there's probably. nobody in there boxing. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. I had no idea they did that. That just, that actually sounds a little disgusting to tell you the truth, the whole electrifying it and seeing it come to life. I don't know about that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to scare anybody, and I know that we have people that listen that don't eat meat, and I'm sorry, you know, I don't mean to. Yeah, that, that number is improving by the moment. <laughs> yeah. It's just part of, the, part of the process, but, I mean, you know, they do a lot to make sure that everything is clean, cleanly, you know, uh, and, and as high quality as possible there. I know that as a fact because they were they were always adding new processes to make the quality even better at, when I was there. So sometimes it it really made the process a bit more difficult to do that to do certain things. But for the for the end customer, it was it was always a benefit. So yeah, sure, nice. Cool. Well, it sounds like it was a great contest. Sounds like a lot of people had fun. I know that there was a little bit of controversy around John's lift of the of the device, but I mean, the judge okayed it. Iron Mind okayed it, so that's uh, it's in the books now. So congratulations to John, and uh, I commend Nate for admitting that a mistake was made. That kind of stuff happens. I've done that too. Um, in fact, one time we misloaded. Uh, a big lift for uh, for Daniel Reinard when he traveled all the way across the country to come here and lift one time. So that kind of stuff happens. And if any any promoters are listening, I mean, you just wanna you just wanna pay attention and, and do as good as you possibly can with that kind of stuff. And, and errors do take place. If they do, then you just roll with it and and go on to the next event or wherever it is. So good job, yeah, to everybody. Good. And it sounds like a lot. Of, everybody had a great time. Yeah, that's a big turnout too. A lot of stuff mm-hmm. going on. So, mm-hmm. yep, yep. nice. And this gym looks like it's constantly evolving. Yeah, he's just got the best, the best grip gym ever. Yep, love it. So. Yeah. So uh, that's all I got. Was there anything else? I don't know if there's more stuff down here below, Alan. If there's videos hey, or just just one thing I I wanted to mention on the subject of New Jersey. So you know who comes from New Jersey, right? Daniel LaRusso. You've been seeing those Cobra Kai trailers lately uh, on uh, YouTube? You by seeing them, do you mean watching them 15 times every time they come across? Yes. Yeah. I do the same thing. I do the yeah. same thing. I tell you, I am more excited about this than I am when they started bringing back Star Wars. Man, no kidding you. I, I this agree. is going to be epic. Yeah, I, I can't wait. Is I'm it going to be on – is it one of those – things that's only going to be on youtube red though that, or? that's how it looked like it's how it looked so i don't know if that's like a subscription thing or, or what oh i'm signing up i can't i can't not see this it just <laughs> looks like it's going to be awesome yeah. i tell you those two uh between looking at, at at daniel and um and johnny those guys look great you oh, know man, in their 50s like, they look great daniel looks better now than he did in like karate kid 3 oh yeah he, yeah he was like because, you know, he was always, like, 20 years older than they said he was, you know. You know that, right? Oh, like, yes, I know. Like, he was graduated from, like, college age when they had him as, like, a, a sophomore in high school. Yeah, then, no, I know. You know. He was, like, 40 years old in the second <laughs> one. And then, you know, <laughs> so, but, yeah. <laughs> That's he, about he right. better now than he did in, in uh, number three. Yeah, that just looks like it's going to be an, just an awesome 
an awesome thing. I, I, I don't know how long they have it slated to run, but, uh, yep, that gives me something. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I can't even, I can't even describe it. But every well, one of those trailers. posted on, on developments like release dates and, and things along those lines because I know we've oh, got a lot of people listening that are, that are Karate Kid fans. Yeah, I'll do it. They keep teasing me, you know, because they make the trailers look just a little bit different. So I yeah. click on it. I end up watching the same thing. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, it doesn't upset me because I still like seeing it. But I'm always well, expecting well, something new. <laughs> yeah, and I, my favorite part was um, Johnny's in there doing, like, work, probably, like, expenses for <laughs> counting or something. And then the kid's out there, <laughs> the kid's out there watching the window outside of his office. He goes, hey, hey, Sensei, is there any special way you want me to do this? He's like... No, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> was just, he, just, he doesn't even look up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no, you this have is, to wonder this what is... happened, though, because we saw, we saw Johnny kind of turn baby face at the end of uh, the first one and beginning of the second one, you know, when he comes over and he gives Johnny the, you're all right, LaRusso, gives him the big old trophy. And then, you know, at the beginning of the second one, he has a fight with his uh, with Sensei Crease, you know, a little argument there. So you kind of see that he's going babyface, which is a good guy in wrestling, Alan. And, yes, uh, right, right. But now, now it looks like he's back full on chicken shit heel. Uh, in yeah, the new one. So uh, I was, I, I was, kind of like it. I was trying to find a little bit of the backstory, but it sounds like you know, since since his uh, All Valley Tournament days, you know, it sounds like things had more or less gone Daniel's way through the years, mm-hmm. and not so much for Johnny. So. Yeah. Yeah, it. Um, I, I guess we'll see. I, I think a lot will come out in the first episode, but I, <laughs> man, it, I'm gonna I'm gonna start losing sleep again until this thing comes on. So it sucks a little bit. My health's gonna deteriorate until much, the first dude. episode. You gotta, gotta recover from that shoulder injury, so you can't be losing too much. That'll give you something. I know it. That'll give you something to watch while you're lying in the hospital bed recovering those, those for that day or so. Yeah, I'll have to make a special cradle thing for my phone. This, this gives me something to occupy my time with. But, yeah, yeah. real excited. So, anyway, for anybody out there listening, like I said I know we'd mentioned some, some Karate Kid stuff before, so it's going to yeah. be historic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember. I, I was wondering if it was gonna if it was gonna spin off that video that came out where Johnny was actually the good guy and Daniel was the heel in the in the movie. Do you remember that? Right. We talked about yep. that one time. <laughs> yep, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Well, take it away, Alan. Send us off. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for for episode forty seven of this week in grip. The. Uh, uh, February for four uh, competition recap. I hope everybody liked it. Uh, We'll be back again next week with another one. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.